I am the knight. No, I'm not really, no. I mean, okay. Batman has had quite the history in cinema, wouldn't you say? Yep. I think he's had the most movies of any DC character, hasn't he? Easily. I would say so, absolutely. 100%. I mean, just... I mean, you look at... <clears throat> you look at... Uh, I mean, the Adam West Batman movie, that's kind of like the first yeah. theatrical Batman well, okay. release. So, <clears throat> not counting uh, Batman versus Superman. Yeah, which... Or the terrible Justice League movie that they made way back when. Oh, yeah. So, Superman has had five. Okay. One through four, and then Superman Returns. No, six. Man of Steel. That's right. So, uh, how many has Batman had? He's had Adam West Batman, Mm -hmm. the two Keaton ones, Mm -hmm. the Kilmer, Mm -hmm. the Clooney, the three Bales. I mean, he's already winning. Yeah, he's already got eight right there. He's got nine counting Batman versus Superman. Now, would it change if we went into the animated? Oh. Uh, Uh, not re- not really no i mean uh, especially here recently i mean the batman the batman uh ones have been just yeah. tremendous okay. i mean you had um uh, under the red hood you had <laughs> red hood you had the batman and uh you had son of batman mm-hmm. you had batman versus robin then you had uh there's been a battle lot. for the cow there's i mean there's been a lot of really good ones yes yeah. dc in terms of animated go yeah. all out oh, yeah. over marvel i mean marvel they're they're they do okay with some TV series. I mean, I've seen some, but overall, in terms of animated films, yeah, DC has D- just got it on lock. Yeah, you're they not know wrong. they know what's up. Oh man! So, but. and I can't wait for the Killing Joke. Cannot wait. It's gonna be good. Yes, it it's is. It's gonna be real good. July, man. Cannot get here quick enough. Yep. Okay, but um, Cinema Sins, one of our favorite channels on YouTube, mm-hmm. did a uh, everything wrong with Batman. 1989. That's oh. a great year, by the way. That's, of course it uh, was. Yeah. 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 Uh, for those of you who yeah. want to feel old, that was the year Michael was born, and that was the year... That was also the year I was born. And it was the year after I was born. Yeah. <laughs> I was born year of the dragon. Woo! Uh, but anyway. I've forgotten. Which one of us Snake. is older? Oh. You're older. I think I am. You're yeah. older. Yeah. yeah, I am. That's right. Okay. I thought you forgot what Chinese Zodiac creature no. we were. No. H- how could I ever forget? I just randomly blurred out Snake gear. anyway. So. Metal Gear. <laughs> but, uh... Meow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me that was Akimides. the that was No! Movie. That's not the noise you make. <laughs> That's better. And, of course, we are joined this <laughs> these rec- the, with this recording session with Archimedes and our lovable friend, Gun. The blood... <laughs> and... and Gun! The bloody pigeon. Yep. The bloody pigeon. Oh, the oh. drunk bloody pigeon. Stop that. <laughs> Archimedes. No hitting the rum. Archimedes, stay out of the formaldehyde. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Cinema Sins. <laughs> anyway. Cinema Sins did this, and we're going to see what they point out. We're going to see if there's some this, we agree with, some we don't agree with. This is going to be good. <clears throat> also, <laughs> also a uh, little bit of a tribute with this as well. Um, Prince mm-hmm. did a lot of the music for this. That's true, he and did, didn't he? and a little bit of a tribute to that as well. I mean, because you know Prince was one of my favorite musicians ever, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he will be sort he will be sadly missed. But I think his music will speak for itself. I mean, I still watch this movie from time to time, and I'm just like, wow, this music actually is really good. Yeah. But Apparently, it was a whole vault of Prince music that hasn't been released yet. Oh, dude. Huh. The man was a recluse when it came to a lot of his music. Mm-hmm. He didn't want a lot of it out there because he wanted a lot for himself. And I respect that greatly about you know him as an artist. I mean, it's just like uh, J.D. Salinger. Salinger as well, mm-hmm. you know, writer of Catcher in the Rye. Oh, yeah. Had a lot of unproduced manuscripts at his house whenever he passed away. And they've been fighting now for years since Salinger's passed away to see who gets the rights to publish them. Yeah. I mean... Who knows? I mean... <laughs> but, anyway, everything wrong with 1989 Batman. Yes. Here we go. Two and a half minutes of opening credits that do nothing for nobody. DC Comics. Ah. If you were a Batman <laughs> fan back in 1989, you seriously wondered what you got yourself into when songs written and performed by Prince came up. 
You probably even like Prince, but doing songs for a Batman movie? It's kind of like if you went to see The Dark Knight and saw a credit. Songs written and performed by Kanye West. Oh, come Holy, on. Holy, no. this is a nightmare city you landscape not, full of map paintings. Sanchez Kanye Mexican food Prince. advertisement that says only the name. In goddamn Gotham. No <laughs> phone number, street address. What kind of late 1980s <clears throat> advertising is this? It's so this true. asshole takes the family's cat, and that guy's an asshole to be certain. But then inexplicably, the dad decides we should walk all across town looking for taxis, even though we're directly in front of a theater where many taxis will show up. We're going the wrong way! And there's no way that a cab can somehow use the roads to get us going in the right direction. I know where we are. So let's run into this creepy alley and look for a cab. Uh. Animated Batman is not here to stop robberies, just to hurt the bad guys who do them way after they occur. Also, <laughs> he thought that was Bruce Wayne's family, and so did I. But nope, fake out, just regular muggers. In all of Gotham, Bruce chose to follow and apprehend petty holdup criminals just because they attack in an alley like his parents' killers. But meanwhile, murders out the ass are taking place all over the city in non-Bruce Wayne memory alley territory. Batman, while smart and awesome, kicks the gunless guy first for some reason. I want you to tell all your friends about me. Publicity I could have gotten by preventing the robbery in the first place and saving the dad <laughs> from a nasty hit to the head. But nah, I like this mysterious word of mouth publicity better. Harvey Dent <laughs> really does later turn into Two Face in this series because eventually he becomes Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Evil Whoa. people set meeting with Crooked Cop a mere two blocks from recent crime scene. This is Tim Burton's That's vision of Gotham. Bullock. A bunch yeah, of I'm glad they didn't thinking make architecture Bullock. and traffic yeah. consisting mostly of station they wagons. Of course, trying. all I have to do is get thrown into <clears throat> yeah. a vat of chemicals for this oddly specific foreshadowing to come true. This Save the Festival basket is filled with Monopoly money. <laughs> Could you tell me which of these guys is Bruce Wayne? I'm not. A oh, dang oh, it! No. no, not again. Okay, let's try that. So, Still the basket is filled with monopoly go. money. Could you tell me which of these guys is Bruce Wayne? I'm not a very good reporter, so I need all the help I can get. Uh, Alfred, who is uh. serving the whole of this party, is also able to follow Bruce's every step to pick up after him. Commissioner Gordon. Why in the hell did Knox and Vicki Vale think that Commissioner Gordon decided to walk into some dark room full of antiques after rushing out of the party? And why isn't it locked? Who are you? Oh, sorry, Bruce Wayne. Seriously? Well, <laughs> socialite Bruce Wayne, nobody knows what this guy looks like. Ah, 1989, when a two-way mirror and an oscillating VHS camera were considered futuristic technology only the rich could afford. Also, when you need video surveillance of a room, be sure to have at least three cameras all shooting at basically the same angle. Uh, Rick, what's up? Anonymous tip. Amazing, the sound quality of these cameras, which must be 50 feet away, that can isolate a conversation in the middle of a huge party. Hmm, Shoot to kill. Shotgun mics are that good. Know what I mean. Actually, yeah. now that you say you know what I mean, after something as simple as shoot to kill, I wonder if you mean something else entirely. <laughs> these bad guys doing bad guy things are super <laughs> clueless about stealth and Freeze! Look at this gung-ho cop who plays by his own rules. Ah, ten bad guys who don't give a about killing me at the drop of a hat? I got this covered. This does Jay awesome. have any idea what this does? Yeah. Or is he just hoping against hope that these levers will somehow aid in his escape? Batman could easily start punching Jack and tying him up for the cops right now, but decides to wait until the situation is way more dangerous before doing Batman stuff. This cop took <laughs> creeping <laughs> lessons from the assholes in the smooth criminal video. Who is this guy? <laughs> I don't know. Batman makes a secret getaway, even though everyone can see him through the smoke. Check the roof, guys! For no reason we can figure out, Jack doesn't simply drown after being thrown into the toxic chemical sludge. One half the Wayne Gate has metal leaves all over it. The other side does not. And I'm much more concerned about this than I am any other plot going on right now. Oh, wow, so, yeah. Little Excuse me? Yeah. Makes for a nice joke, but damn, why did they decide to eat dinner at opposite ends of the table on a first date? Is Bruce that goddamn formal? The dining room is definitely not you. I like how much she knows him after one date. <laughs> the legal surgery clinic has sign flashing surgery, which I guess helps attract customers without also attracting cops. Wait, is his bathroom inside a vault of some kind? Amazing how the lighting in this place agrees with setting up a dramatic reveal. Bruce Wayne had sex with Vicki Vale, and instead the movie showed me the chemical warehouse assault, because the movie hates me and also is probably aiming for a PG-13 rating. Why would you do this in your bedroom where you've just bedded a civilian? Jesus, you live in a mansion. Find a different room for this You have to do it overnight. Wait till they get a load of me. Kind of amazing after Heath Ledger's great performance, we just forgot how great Jack Nicholson was in this movie. So we will remove us in here. What if we say no? Well, Tony. Nobody wants a war. Bad guy challenges another bad guy at a meeting and falls for the no hard feelings ruse cliche, which anyone who's seen a Bond film knows to never fall for. Yeah. Yes, sir. The compliance with this mission requires me to put on my sunglasses. I just want you to do your job. <laughs> Albeit with glasses two times too big for my face, but I'm doing my job. Who's this guy? <laughs> Who cares? Top photojournalist in Gotham has zero interest in the identity of the city's infamous Yanni, vigilante. Come on. Come on, Stalking. Dude. Also, yeah. Wayne Manor, which goes through the trouble of having three cameras trained on the Japanese arsenal room, has no video security around the premises just in case someone starts snooping around the house. In this debris-filled alley, Bruce Wayne ritually adds to the garbage by laying flowers at the spot of his parents' death. Also, he places roses on the site of his parents' murders, rather than simply visiting their graves. I mean, you're honoring the place they got murdered. What the fuck? 
unauthorized dead parents rose examination. Time to pay the check. Joker gets away with this in front of all these people and at least five cops on the top of the steps because reasons. Bruce gets shot in the shoulder, mm. but he's Batman, so it didn't hurt, I guess. I don't have any comment, no. Did the Joker build this contraption for the express purpose of punching a TV when he doesn't like something? <laughs> it appears to have zero use outside of destroying a TV, but I thought I'd ask. I feel that there's a certain weight that lifts when she is here. She was here one time, and she f***ed him, so you're dealing with a small sample size. <laughs> so special about the alley at Pearl and Phillips Street. Jeez, this is like Fatal Attraction or something. She doesn't have a hunch that Bruce is Batman. She's obsessed with the rich guy who showed her a nice time one night. She will not be ignored, Bruce. Stop the press. Who is that? That's Vicky Vale. How is this movie's Joker ultimately motivated by his penis? Does that sound like any version of the Joker you've ever heard of? He wants to cause chaos and kill Batman. That's it. I'm not even sure he has a dick. Hmm. How does Joker override the broadcast at a news station? What equipment have we seen that allows him to do this? Only 13 deaths? Well, he shipped more than a million cases of that hmm. Movie strongly suggests these news anchors are going makeup free to avoid Joker contamination. But <laughs> then why does this asshole anchor have two mega sores on his face that even makeup couldn't hide? Did he bury his face in a box of herpes? How did makeup Ooh. even hide that mountain of in the first place? I'm sorry, but I'm gonna be 10 minutes late to the museum, okay? What does Vicki Vale do besides stalk Bruce Wayne that is gonna make her 10 minutes late? Luckily though, it happened. And now Bruce knows she's at the museum under suspicious circumstances. Even Gotham's art museum can't escape looking like some of its walls were built with leftover submarine parts. Which is good, because <laughs> these giant vents will make spreading Joker's poison so easy. Vicki Vale is so made up with so many products on her person, I wonder how she avoided dying. Surely she's heard of the massive makeup scare going on right now. Who said she couldn't have makeup before? That she knows. Is Here's not one massive Prince music video without Prince. A minute and a half of art destruction I'm supposed to find humor in. Super discount Banksy. I kind of yeah. like this one, Bob. Leave it. But I won't tell any of my other henchmen not to deface Plus, it and expect them to simply get the message the no matter where they are in this museum. Yep. She's a living work of art. Oh, she's still hot. Frightening. Batman's entrance somehow doesn't kill both the Joker and Vicky via falling shards of glass. Also, I'd like to know why yeah, climbing to the museum yeah. roof and smashing through the window was a better option than simply busting through the doors. Vicky could be in all sorts of trouble, but you decide better take the longer, more complicated, dangerous, and dramatic way inside. Also, luckily for her and the plot of this movie, Vicky somehow has the wherewithal to grab her camera bag and put it around her shoulder, even though she has no clue what's going on. And I'm pretty sure it was hanging on a chair, and that would have been way too hard to grab from here, but thank God she did, right? The Batmobile huh. makes Lost. one slightly tight turn and a fing Blues Brothers car accident breaks out. Also, <laughs> <laughs> the question is how many assholes will blindly drive into each other Holy even crap. though they had plenty of chances yep. to stop? That's the answer is 16. How do these yep. dumb assholes have any idea Mark where Batman is? And how did they get around the bulldozer, <laughs> the stop traffic, and all the etc. going on? How much do you weigh? About 108, I think. <laughs> Come on. She's beautiful, but 108? <laughs> See that thing on my belt? Grab it. Whatever you do, don't let go. Batman gives these instructions a split second before Vicky can even process it and could have killed her. Also, he mm. can jump down to beat up these dudes he doesn't need to beat up for any reason. Just go! The camera yeah. is a machine, and God came from the machine to preserve Batman's identity. <laughs> oh, look at this crazy guy. I see the Indiana face. Jones is strong yes. with this one. Yes, Stop. Yes. If this Batmobile only stops when Batman the tells it to, then how did it not run into a hundred cars on the way here, and possibly drill a few pedestrians on the way? Also, <laughs> how did it lose the cops that immediately started following the Batmobile once he remotely activated it? The only way to get to Wayne Manor is through Tim Burton's woods. <laughs> You're not wrong. All these bats in the cave roaming free, and Batman decided to cage one of them because he's a heartless bastard. How do you know that survivors. was not injured? Including in yeah. this cage, where I make Alfred come down and feed him every day with nutritious gruel. Hairspray won't do it alone, but hairspray mixed with lipstick and perfume will be toxic. Except to Vicky Vale, who is probably wearing all of those things plus makeup. Take that yeah. to the press. There's no reason why Batman even took her to his lair. All he had to do was take her to her apartment, knock her out, take the film she shot, and once back home, send the envelope to the press, or put it on her nightstand. But I guess it's way more dramatic to drive her all the way out here, which is how Batman likes it, yeah, I guess? That's how also, he likes why it. didn't he just make uh, copies of all this stuff and put this package in the trunk of the Batmobile before he went to go save Vicky? Why did you bring me here? Well, you could have sent that stuff to the press yourself. Vicky Vale oh. would be amazing at CinemaSins. <laughs> Batman have what appears to be two bottles of mouthwash down here in the Batcave computer station. Uh, the grown yeah, woman with a teddy bear on her bed definitely deserves a sin. By the way, Batman totally walked into an apartment building dragging an unconscious woman into it, and no one saw him. Oh, he took the film. This is what she says, as opposed to, he put his hand inside my bra, without permission this time. All these people behind uh, him, they're the founders uh, of Shutterstock. No lie. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. This story is happening during the Harry S. Truman years. They had lots of modern equipment during that age. Also, aside from the ridiculous proofreading errors on this page, and the total non-article underneath the headline, these combinations are not what Batman told Vicky earlier. Hmm. It was any combination that caused death, and he specifically said hairspray mixed with lipstick and perfume. Also, these are some extremely specific combinations, and I don't know how Joker planned to do the harm he expected to do if these were the only combinations. 
have given a name to my pain. And it's weird, specific chemical reactions that only killed 13 total people. You can't really blame Batman for this, can you? Plus, after he mm. told the entire city about the new and improved Joker products, everyone was afraid to use anything anyway. What a dumb plan this is. <laughs> The Joker is addicted to perfectly good television sets. Vicky Vale's room is number 9, but if you're wondering where rooms 43 through 87 are, they're to the right. Oh no, uh, Joker's here! Right at the time Bruce Wayne is here! Hey, how come Vicky has a large bowl of popcorn on her mantle? And Vicky yeah, is now, weird. in yep. this super tense moment, casually eating the stale popcorn she grabbed off the mantle for defense. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? I always ask that of all my prey. Never once does Joker say this until he says it to Bruce Wayne, giving him the clue that Jack killed his parents. He didn't tell Eckhart, Grissom, or that crime lord dude this phrase before killing them. So nice try, f***o. That's not true at all. Joker runs and stands over Bruce to taunt him, but somehow completely misses the total lack of blood from Bruce's Back to the Future 3 bulletproof vest. Also, he doesn't shoot him a few more times to make sure he's dead. Yeah. Does Joker leave Vicky's place just because he fired a bullet and he's worried about cops showing up? Why did he even bother to come here if the reason wasn't to either kill or kidnap her? Luckily, this tray is bulletproof and the Joker didn't aim for head or dick. Why even bother opening this present? That could have been more poison. The Gotham newspaper <laughs> office cheers for the New York Giants? Gotham City yeah. painting. Joker here. I love how the mayor dude is looking directly to his left, helping the audience know he's reacting to Joker. But this only makes sense if somehow the field team set up a live feed television monitor of the station's broadcast directly to the mayor dude's left. Which, come on, they did not do. <laughs> but one thing I am not is a killer. Why would you make this claim if you're the Joker? The entire press saw you stab a guy in the steps of City Hall and you were implicated in killing 13s of people with poison. I'm sure Dominic Doretto would vouch for you, though. We are not prepared to discuss any deals. Does Joker know the exact configuration of these particular huh. monitors at the That's TV station to good. make a swiping yeah. motion that will clear them off? And what exactly does that even do? The mayor wasn't even being broadcast anyway. You heard it, folks. 20 million. And you saw it, folks. My hands went from one position to a drastically different one in the next shot. <laughs> Eating popcorn with gloves on. You're not only ruining the fine leather gloves with <laughs> salt and butter and other chemicals, you're also putting whatever bullshit is on your gloves into your mouth. The Waynes yeah. enjoyed that place so much they decided to walk down deserted alleys and streets afterwards laughing like asshole. You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? Add the Wayne parents to the large group of people to whom Jack Napier did not ask this question before killing them. No hesitation whatsoever in killing the parents, but poses the kid a question that makes no sense. And then he doesn't even kill him. Also, this movie makes a massive change to Batman lore by having Joker be his parents' killer. Okay, yeah. fine. But yeah. then why would a psycho like Joker kill the parents but leave a little kid witness alive? He yeah. wouldn't do that, right? This Batman shouldn't exist. Alfred makes the all-time biggest presumption in the world and leads Vicky into the secret Batcave. But that wasn't just another night for either of us, was it? I mean... We, we both got to each other, didn't we? You had a meal and had sex. There was nothing much special about it. None of these henchmen fall down from being struck by these dozens of ricocheting bullets. With everyone yeah. knowing what chemicals not to mix, and the fact that it only killed 13 people one day, was there a pressing need to destroy the Axis Chemicals factory in this manner? He could have done it way more stealthily, and with less danger to himself, right? In a minute, we're about to see the Batwing, which could easily have flown over to do this job. Into the air, Junior Birdman! Roll credit. Oh, shit, is that where they got the title for Birdman? This <laughs> makes me want to send something, so I will, for virtually no reason awesome. at all. Way too many minutes of this goofy-ass parade, and I'm a Prince fan. It's actually beyond ridiculous, after all the things Joker's done, that nobody in the police force wants to arrest him right now. By the way, law enforcement just totally disappeared in this movie, didn't they? Take the pictures. Gotham's green. Whoa, whoa there, pal. There's probably a guy with a pretty good union job who's supposed to think of the headlines. You just report, dickhead. Huh. This looks cool, yeah, I yeah. guess. But thank God the Joker's poison gas was light as helium. Am I right? Are surgical masks also, really going to prevent you from breathing in all this gas? The gas and since when does being, being in a car yeah. protect you from gas that can make its way into any of the thousands of openings cars have? Yep. Batwing is equipped with a special cutter thing to grab balloons just in case that comes up. Oh. During his assault on the Joker, Batman decides to give an unseen audience cool. a glimpse that of the Batwing awesome silhouetted part. against the moon. That's good marketing right there. Batman, huh. the Batman, with a targeting computer and everything, misses the Joker with missiles and bullets. And Joker seems to even know he'll miss, with no explanation. And then this comically large gun is able to shoot down the Batwing. What, because it's a comically long Roger Rabbit gun? Are you kidding me? I've got to get you to the church on time. But why? Do you uh, really need to climb this super tall church in order to get a helicopter ride? Why not have a car waiting? That worked at City Hall when you killed the crime lord guy with a pen. Batman survives this crash because, let me guess, he's yeah. Batman. Yeah. This is some Spider-Man yeah, here. Course. Even before they made Spider-Man 3, this was pretty iconic imagery, right? Makes for interesting visuals, but the height of this church bell yeah. tower is stretching into Cinderella yeah, territory really in terms of believability. Yeah. How does Joker have any henchmen at all in this church? Remember, he just decided to walk to this place after his plans with the gas balloons didn't pan out. Batman came in right behind him, and no one else followed the Joker the whole way. They basically already have to be here, sitting and waiting in a church that Joker had no idea he was going to enter for any reason. Also, why is Batman so far away from them after this shot of him getting out of the Batplane? 
How many times does Kim Basinger scream in this movie? How many times did they possibly call her back, put her in a studio, demand different screams in the ADR process, and threaten to shoot orphans if she didn't give them the right one? Where has this henchman been the whole time? If he's able to beat that ass this easily, why didn't he show up before now? Also, how do any of these church goons even come close to hanging with Batman in a fight? We thought the hero fell to his death only to find he's holding on to something impossible and surprises everyone cliche. Well, yeah, Batman doesn't kill people, and but send him yeah, he totally just hole. did. Yeah, that guy dead. Yeah. Totally dead. Joker falls for this. <laughs> kill you. I'd object to that statement wildly if this movie hadn't just shown us Batman killing someone, so I'd give up. The second time this happens in the movie, and it makes uh, no sense. Where could Joker be that Batman couldn't see this coming? Batman shoots this thing, and with expert movie magic, it somehow wraps around the Joker's foot, while also anchoring itself to the gargoyle. How does it work? You, that's how. Well, it all worked out. But one question. Once he and Vicky get back up to the roof, and they walk back down the steps, many of which were destroyed, mm -hmm. how do they get around that huge bell Joker cut down to block the entrance? And once they get past that, how are there not millions of cops and press waiting for them when they get down? Nearly every scene of this huh. movie in downtown Gotham occurs near the Monarch Theater. Gotham's supposed to be like huge-ass New York City, but almost every scene takes place near here, making Gotham feel like Hill Valley. <laughs> Cast a shadow on the heart of the city. Call me. How do we call? Knox always thinks of the questions other reporters are too afraid to ask. He hmm. gave us a signal! Which he can see anywhere from his mansion miles away from the city, or unblocked by tall buildings when he's in an alley somewhere. <laughs> da, 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 da. Never rub another man's rhubarb. Uh. <laughs> Jesus. Well, that was weird. That was a whole thing. Yeah. Wait. Here Wait. We go. Wait. Come on. Service only to point out and make public the dishonesty, the downright villainy of boss Jim W. Getty's political machine. <laughs> all right, here's how we begin. First task, reconnaissance. <laughs> everything that's going on in all three casinos, from the rotation of the dealers Good. Good. to the path of every cash card. Beetlejuice. <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> Mind <laughs> offered. Leaving to make you understand. <laughs> You're not that bad anymore. You have to find another way. You can't handle the truth. Yeah, basically. Let's get dangerous. Yes! Darkwing Duck! Oh, Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck! Amazing. Come on, I want you to do it. I want you to do it. Come on. Yep. Now, that's real acid, so I want to see goggles, people. <laughs> real acid? <laughs> I know why the you're goggles afraid to go out at night. Yeah. The Batman. <laughs> How did we end up here? This place is horrible. Smells like balls. There are two rules to remember if you want to have a good time. Rule number one, never run out of Colt 45. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Run out of Colt 45. Micah. Rule number two, never run out of... Ne never, never forget rule, rule number, number one. one. Yep. <laughs> Billy D. Williams, one of the smoothest men Colt, ever. Colt 45. Micah, how do you feel about those rules? Uh, those are good rules. That... Yep. Uh, speaking of 45s. For, <laughs> force me to dig out another cop drop. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <coughs> All yeah, right. Micah's, so, Micah's having oh, a bad man. time. So, but, uh, okay. Whew. In the past, we've talked about, uh, we talked about Batman, you know, what, we had our fears about Ben Affleck as Batman. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of those fears have been put to rest because... I Yeah, I, th I think Batfleck and Al Jeremy Irons as Alfred, those were the more enjoyable parts of that movie. I mm. think so, too. I feel that as well. Still haven't seen it, mostly because I just don't care. I yeah. mean, you're not missing a lot. I just don't care. But, but positive note, Ben Affleck will be directing the next Batman movie, and he'll be writing it with Jeff... Johns, oh Jeff Johns, one of the oh gods of comic book. Ooh, I mean, holy right. crap! Uh, okay, <laughs> and, and the good. only uh, I was that, gonna say, it's a good combo. It is, it is, and to see, uh, to see where Batman has come. I mean, to to see the different actors portray him. You know, you had Adam West, the campy Batman, mm -hmm. and then you had some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. No. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, <laughs> that line is so that, bad. I love it. It's so bad, but yet it's so good. Uh, it's it's so bad. I love that line. I think I think my favorite Adam West campy Batman moment was um, it was a cliffhanger. He's about to get dumped in a bat of acid. I thought about it when he 
he cut the balloons with the bat wing. He's like, why does he have this? But like, and then he jumps out of the acid at the beginning of the next episode. And he's like, don't worry, Robin. We fortunately remembered to wear our acid proof bat cape. And it's like, seriously? And how does the cape protect you from all that acid you just fell in? Like, No. It, yeah. But look, it's I'll just, tell you right now, it doesn't. <clears throat> but uh. it's just every time. And then like the shark. The shark repellent. Yeah. I was gonna bring up the shark yep. repellent. Also, also another, also <laughs> another one that they did. Uh, it was a uh, the, they were chasing the Joker, and uh, here's here's they had to put them in a situation they had to escape. Uh, it was him and Robin, and they were in the subway, and they were down there with a, a girl who had a lead on the Joker, and they said mm-hmm. they said this is where the Joker said he was going to meet me, and they're down there, and Robin asks her is like. She's like, there's a ven-. he's like, there's a vending machine over here. You want anything? And she's like, yes, I want some gum, please. He goes over, and he puts a dollar in the vending machine, and the vending machine spits out smoke and knocks him out. And that just, is so contrived. I'm just like, what? I did. Uh, I was like, what if some random person would have came along and was just like, oh, oh, look, yeah. sugar bomb. How do you know that they didn't? <laughs> I don't. That's don't. the thing. How do you know that they didn't? This is that person would wake up later on and just be like, "Well, I'm not getting anything out of a vending well, machine." Okay, ever so there was but, a, there was one episode they chased somebody. I actually think they were chasing the Joker, and he ran into a women's locker room, and so they ran in, but they like had their eyes covered, good. so they wouldn't unintentionally see any women in a state of undress, and they were like calling out to him to make sure it was clear. It's just like, it's so funny. Uh, and it's then ridiculous. also, also the, them climbing up the side of the building. Sure. Yeah. Climbing up the side of the building was also a funny mo- They ran into Don Knotts one time. <laughs> so I really. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are y'all doing climbing up the side of this building? I really feel like any Don corny Knotts. stuff in any Batman movie can be attributed to a throwback to like Adam West. As of Batman. course it well, can. I mean, Holy rusted metal Batman. Yeah. Huh? It's the ground. It's all metal. It's full of holes, you know? Holy. Oh. And you're just like, really? Yeah. Schumacher, really? Schumacher you tried to do that. Schumacher tried to do that. He said that's yeah. what he want. He said he, he he was held back with Batman Forever, but when Batman Forever made more money than Batman Returns, he was given more artistic freedom, if that's what you want to call it. And then he made Batman and Robin, and then the studio's like, my God, what have we done? Yeah, you, you screwed up. Yeah, that was you, bad. you effed everything over. Yeah, you effed up. Yeah, you effed up. Yeah, hecked right up. I mean, just... So, yeah. Bat, so Batman, though a spotty history in some places, for the most part, I feel, I feel has been extremely well done. Mm-hmm. I mean... The, this, I've always liked this movie. I mean, even though... No, I, I love stuff, it, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, it, Michael Keaton as Batman is, I'd say, probably... Uh, he's my favorite Batman. In terms of Bruce Wayne, he's probably my second favorite Bruce Wayne. Uh, my favorite Bruce Wayne is probably Christian Bale. Because, okay, all uh, right. Simply because of the one scene in The Dark Knight where he's in his Lamborghini and he and he saves that guy from getting hit by the truck by the truck, and he gets out. He's like he's like Mr. And they're like Mr. Wayne. That was a real that was a real nice thing you did. Trying to catch the light. No, you you weren't trying to get in front of the. The guy was trying to blackmail him. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, well, why is that? Who's in it? And he looks back, and it's the same. It's the guy who's trying to blackmail. It's just like that. You see, that's Bruce yeah. Wayne maintaining character, but also yep. being Batman. Yeah, there's that moment though where they lock eyes, and he sees that Bruce Wayne just saved his bacon. And he's just like, damn. They see me rolling. <laughs> they hate him. Uh, rolling and trying to catch me right and dirty. <laughs> that's pretty good. I just kind of want somebody like Photoshop some sunglasses on Bruce Wayne. As he's, <laughs> yeah, like, looks yeah like, those pixel shades. Yeah, the pixel shades. Shoop. Deal with it. <laughs> yep. I just saved your life. Uh, <laughs> and, okay, let's talk about Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Oh, man. Jack, Jack Nicholson. Nicholson, as he put it, he said he played it like a psychotic Bugs Bunny. He You're watched, not wrong. He watched Bugs Bunny cartoons, and he thought... What if instead of Bugs Bunny being here, if he took it to 11 Mm -hmm. in terms of his wackiness? And instead of it being in the Looney Tunes world, it's in the real world. Mm -hmm. How shocking would that truly be? Yeah. And that's how he portrayed it. And he said that overcoming the darkness of the character and maintaining maintaining his composure was a hard thing. And then, uh, of course, we all know with Heath Ledger what happened with him. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean... I'm worried about Jared Leto now from the oh, stories man. of him like sending like dead animals to cast members yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's a whole thing. Well, 
that's method acting. I mean, that Jack Nicholson's a method actor. Heath Ledger was a method actor. Leto is a method actor as well. And I'm not sure if method acting requires you sending dead animals to the cast members. He, he's yeah. trying to stay in character. I mean, no, I was, understand, but that's just bizarre. Well, to, it's to be the, fair, if he had, who's who's playing Amanda Waller? Amanda Waller, uh, Viola Davis. Viola, da- yeah. Viola Davis said in an interview that if Leto had sent one of those things to her, her husband, who was you know an all star football player, yeah. would have just kicked the crap out <laughs> of him. Davis's husband's a bad dude, and I'm just like. Good. Well, yeah. the dead Good. Ani- the dead animals were the cleanest thing I read that he sent. Oh the yeah, no, there were well, much worse. He, well, he's worked with a lot of the people before. You know, he he knows Margot Robbie. How does that make that okay? Still he weird. Not, well, Still explain weird. that. It's because it's the field of acting, dude. I mean, some people go to extremes like that. the The most extreme I've ever had to go into for a character was me. I was in I was in a play. It was called Over the River and Through the Woods, and it was, I I was portraying an Italian American. Who had who had se- who had separation anxiety and also had the and also had a trouble who also had trouble talking to people of the opposite sex, and he okay. was and he was constantly domineered life. over by his grandparents, and I and I had to maintain that mental state because if I didn't, my performance lagged. I I had to do it. I mean, I had to maintain that intensity and that energy, you know, that he had and. And it didn't require me to like you know I didn't eat pasta all the time I didn't eat pizza all the time but I but you know just staying in that mindset you know quick thinking you know on your toes and also also you know a little more reclusive than I am now. I'm gonna when we start filming something Ben I'm gonna find an actual dead pigeon and sprinkle blood all over it and like tape a yep no note that says meow no on dude it dude it that you see meow. there's a certain point where I think method acting does go meow. too far yeah no, I'm know, just kidding in, I'm in kidding. terms in Give terms of in terms of how Heath Ledger did it, Heath Ledger. <laughs> in terms of how Heath Ledger did it, I think he did well enough with it to where he didn't bug cast members like that. But with how Leto is doing it, I think Leto's looking for a different take. And in order to get into the character, I think he does that. He does that with people. I think he knows are co- more comfortable with it than others. It's still and terrifying. It yeah, is that's, terrifying. That's and that's up. and that's going. And if it makes his, what if he wins? What if like Heath Ledger, he wins an Oscar for his performance? Could I mean, do it. I mean, but still bizarre. It is. I'm, yeah. I mean, I mean, you never know. That's that's how that's how acting is sometimes. I mean, how a performer approaches a part really depends on you know if the studio tells them, oh, you have to play it plain Jane, you know, play it this way, no other way, then they'll do it. But most of the time, if you give an actor free range, they will add things to the character. That's just like Nathan Drake. You know, when N- Nolan North was voicing Nathan Drake and he read the script, he was like, "Can I say some other things?" And then all, can I say? And, and from his improvisation, the whole character changed, yep. and it became pretty much, <clears throat> it pretty much became Nolan North meets meets Mal from Firefly. I mean, that's yeah, pretty much what it became. I mean, Un- Uncharted is basically Firefly the game. Firefly the game set on Earth, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> Earth that was Earth that was, uh, but shiny. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Let's, let's get out of here. Yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, we appreciate you all for tuning in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what did you all think? Did you think that they pointed out some things in here that uh, that changed the movie, the perspective of the movie for you? It did for me in some ways. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Check out the description below for the link to the original video and all of our various other endeavors. Leave a comment below if there's anything else you want us to watch. Leave a like if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe. So until next time, we'll see you later. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.